Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in, coming back and watching, hanging out, all that stuff. I do appreciate it. I hope you're staying safe and healthy out there. And for those of you that are new here, I am Jim. Nice to meet you. And uh, I make videos on this channel about editing your photos using different software packages, just trying to explore creative options, remove some of the complexity from some of these tools. And today I'm in Luminar 4, which I absolutely adore. If you've been here before, you know that. Um, it is my favorite product. So much power, so much control, so much awesomeness kind of under the hood. And uh, I find it really easy to use, which is uh, one of the other reasons I like it so much. So I did a recent video right there called a deep dive, and it's a deep dive on the light tool. And I'm back in the light tool today. And that deep dive, uh, as the name implies, I dive in and show how the tool works, the different things you can do with it. And so I was kind of playing around in my Luminar library, messed around with a couple of photos, and I realized all I did was just use the light tool, and yet the impact that I had on the photo was massive. So Let's get into it and let me show you a couple of examples. This is really illustrating the power of the light tool. Um, it, you can just do so much, right? So here's a, a long exposure from uh, the Moulin Rouge in uh, Paris. I took that a few years ago. And the first thing I see here is that it's wildly red and orange. And while this uh, windmill, uh, that's why I did the long exposure because it's like a windmill thing. And so I wanted to get a blurred version of it. Uh, also, a car went by. You can see a little bit of a light streak there. But um, what I wanted to do is kind of get that in motion. But um, this is a raw file, and I just, this is too red. So the first thing I do is play with the temperature, which I talked a lot about in the, um, in that deep dive. So if you look here, I mean, dragging the temperature to the left already have reduced the impact of the red, and I think it looks better. In fact, in some ways, you could say, hey, great photo, you're done. Um, let me show you the before. Much more orange tint, way too orangey red for me, and too much of the same color. That's one thing I try to avoid a lot of times is too much of the same color. Now I feel like I got a better balance. In fact, I might pull that back a little bit. Um, I don't want to get rid of the red, but I just wanted to not have it overwhelm me. So um, I'm going to leave the exposure slider where it is, and I'm just kind of riffing here. I did an edit, but then I was like, I'll just reset it. And I'll figure it out again. So um, one of the things I pretty much always do is use smart contrast. I think I'll take the highlights down a little bit, maybe bump up the shadows. And let me show you here. I also talked about this in that light um, uh, tool deep dive, and that is the different profiles. These are DCP profiles, and um, I typically leave it on the Luminar default, but here I was kind of playing around, and I kind of liked some of these, so um, I'm trying to find the one that I liked best. I think it was this, let, nope, uh, deep, there we go. Deep, I think, looks quite good there. So it gives it a nice little pop. It does not impact the previous edits that I have already done. Um, might take down the white a little bit. In fact, I might come over here and take down the highlights a little bit more. Uh, and then over here, I've got the uh, the tone curve, which is super powerful. I highly recommend you just kind of experiment with it. I'm going to do a pretty gentle and simple S curve just to get a little bit more contrast into the photo. You will also notice as I drag this one down, this is kind of in the deeper part of the midtones, getting close, so shadows at that very bottom. Um, this is kind of the darker uh, midtones. As I pulled that down, it created a little bit of a vignette, and that's because it is a nighttime shot, so those edges are darker. All the light is kind of in the center of the photo. By the way, you can double click these. Somebody asked me this recently. You can double click these to remove them if you want. But I'm going to put them back. Uh, but let me, uh, I'm going to bump up that a tiny bit. And again, watch here. As I pull this one down, you can see I'm getting a little bit of a vignette, which is great. It's almost like I'm using the vignette tool, but of course I'm not because I'm just using the light tool. Um, over here on the red, I'm going to leave that alone. The green, I'm going to take the midtones and go a tiny bit down. That gives them a tiny bit, a bit of that magenta look. And then the blue, I'm going to take that in the midtones and go up a little bit. And again, same kind of thing. It's just giving the midtones a little bit of bump in blue. And let me show you what we did. That's my starting point, which is wildly, um, I don't want to say unattractive. I like the photo. I mean, I'm biased because I took it but um, wildly red and orange and just too much for me. And I like that a whole lot better. Uh, in fact, I might actually tone those reds down a little bit. Let me see if that might help a little bit. Um, if you are not familiar with the tone curve, I do have a deep dive video about it. I also talked about it in that light uh, tool deep dive. Super powerful. You have a lot of control over color here. And um, that's um, 
That's probably the edit that I would do on this one. Now, this is an example video. To, in, in full disclosure mode, I would probably come in and maybe use some other filters to mess around. I might would use uh, AI structure to give it a little bit of bump, maybe a little bit of detail in the street and some of the buildings, but you can get a, a substantial difference in your photo just using the light tool. One more time, before and after. Now, I'm gonna pop back into my library and I'm gonna take you guys down to this street shot. And here's another example of just using the light tool. I'm not gonna do anything else. I'm gonna start up here with temperature again. And I find that um, night shots in cities because they have all these kind of yellowy lights that they're really dang yellow. And I have to be honest, I don't like that at all. If you like it and that's your thing, that's totally cool. There's nothing wrong with it. Obviously, it's just personal preference for me to make it kind of blue. So I pretty much every time in a night shot, take that temperature slider and head left because I just like that blue tone a whole lot better, but blue is just a more uh, favorite color of mine than, than yellow is, unless we're talking about a sunset. Um, I don't know about the tint. I think I'll leave that there for now. Um, I'll definitely add some contrast. I think it needs that. I'll take down the highlights. Uh, I think I'll leave the shadows alone. This time for the... Uh, uh, DCP profile. I'm going to use camera vivid. I think it gave it a nice little pop. Um, and then maybe I'll take the whites down a tad, maybe bump the shadows a little bit. And again, I edited this earlier, but then I just reset it and I'm kind of riffing here. Uh, once again, I'm going to get the, um, the same kind of play here. Again, notice how dropping that point allows me when I pull that down to get a little bit of a vignette. And again, it's because it's a city shot where the lights are kind of more central to the photo and the edges are, you know, not entirely, but a little bit darker. Uh, the reds, I'm gonna go away from red, so I'm gonna go kind of to blue. I think that's a nice little color pop. Uh, the green, I'm gonna go away from green towards kind of that magenta. Again, a tiny little bit. And the blue, I am gonna go towards blue. And again, I'm just doing mid-tones here. So this point, when I'm putting it on the middle of this line, that's basically the mid-tones, right? This upper right corner is highlights. The bottom left corner is shadows. So you have varying or gradient degrees of uh, light, right, um, going from bottom left to upper right. So when you start in the middle like I am, it's just kind of mid-tones. The reason I'm doing that is there's often a, a fair amount of mid-tones in a photo, and I will do that as just a little bit of a color bump in one direction or the other. And by the way, if you're not familiar enough with this, I recommend looking up a color wheel so that you're familiar with these, uh, how these three color uh, tabs work in the tone curve because red is basically the opposite of like a cyan, green is, is the opposite of magenta, and the blue is the opposite of a yellow. So if I'm going towards the blue, I'm going away from yellow, but if I'm going away from blue, I'm going towards yellow. You can kind of see how that works. So again, I just pick the mid-tones, I just do a little bit toward the color that I like, and it gives me a nice little color bump. Um, and this is just kind of some random uh, street in Montmartre, in, um, in Paris, which is just a lovely city, by the way. I could wander these streets forever and, and shoot, but if you look at the base photo, again, super yellow. These kind of lights like that just really give off that yellow vibe. I don't like it. Um, but some color temperature, some contrast, uh, a profile, and a little bit of, you know, kind of messing around with the, uh, with the tone curve, and I have an edited photo. So to me, that is the power of the, uh, the light tool. It's, it's basically where I start every photo edit. Um, in the rare occasion, there are times when I will start with AI Enhance, and the only reason I ever do that is if the photo is super, super dark and um, I need to do some recovery. Uh, but otherwise, I pretty much start in the uh, light tool every time. It's super powerful. It should be your best friend. Should's kind of a, not a good word, sorry. Um, it, it works well if, it's a, if, it, if you make it a good friend. It's incredibly powerful. It gives you so much you can do on your photo. And one more time, here's a before after. And that's really it, my friends. Just because I did that recent deep dive on light, I thought I would come back and show you a couple of examples of how I just edit only using the light tool because I do that sometimes. Lots of power, lots of control, and um, it's really easy to get to grips with. Just experiment, experiment, experiment. And thanks for watching, my friends. That's really it for today. So I'm gonna sign off. You guys take care. Stay safe out there. Thank you for watching. Thumbs up, like, share, subscribe, all that stuff if you haven't yet. I'll be back really soon. I got more videos planned, more stuff to talk about. And we're going to keep diving into this product and having fun. So take care, my friends. Have a great one. I'll see you soon. And...
Adios.